Good day, viewers. My name is Dalin Sinokoka, and I welcome you to Dare With Electrical YouTube channel. Today, we shall be discussing on how the new power bill will improve electricity supply in the country. As we all know, the House of Assembly, comprising of the House of Representatives and the Senate, on March 1st, 2022, that was last week Tuesday, they passed a bill for an act to alter the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, to allow states to generate, transmit, and distribute electricity in areas covered by the national grid. So what does this entail? Or what has it, what is the impact for the Nigerian electricity sector? Currently, as we know, the Nigerian electricity sector is controlled on the national level, on the federal level. That means all the generating stations in the country supplies power to the national grid. From the national grid is being transmitted to the various states where it's onward distributed to the consumers. And this has led to the epileptic power supply we have within the country because it's being controlled, all power is being controlled at the national level. But now, what this law is trying to say is that there's going to be a decentralized process. That means you don't have to generate and send to the national grid any longer. The states themselves has the right to generate, to transmit, and to distribute. And that is going to be a plus to the electricity sector. And I assure you that if this is appropriately implemented, it will lead to a break in the total darkness that the country has been experiencing for years. Secondly, the monopoly that has been experienced by the various distribution companies in the country. Distribution companies, like as I said, like the BDC, IKEDC, and other distribution schools in the country, they exhibit this monopoly. That is, they feel that they are like a mini gold that without them, there will be no power. And sometimes we, will, we, we notice what transpired in the real state that they serve as a mini god that even the state government <laughs> tend not to even have control over them. So, but with this law being enacted, it gives right to the state to generate, to distribute, and to transmit. And that's a laudable project. And it also will create room for um, healthy competition among the states. Now, you can see that most governors, they don't even care about generation of power when they come into power. That means they, you see them constructing roads, see them saying they pay salaries, see them constructing bridges, building schools as part of their projects for the year. But with this law, you could see that part of their project would be to build generating stations, both steam turbines, hydro, depending on the raw materials that is available within their state. So obviously, this law will create room for healthy competition, and you will see that if a particular state like those state is having 18 to 20 hours power supply constant by the government, and a state like Kaduna State is not getting up to 10 hours power supply, the citizens of Kaduna State will be saying, will be asking their government that what's happening to our state? Why are we not having power? In those state, they're having power. In Lagos states, they're having power. Why? So they will continue to hold the state responsible and they will be this competition to ensure that every, every state is generating and transmitting and distributing their own power. So it is actually a welcome development. However, this 146 pages is a 146 page of bill. It's apart from granting license or granting the power to the state to generate, transmit, and distribute, there are other clauses within the 146 pages of this approved bill. The first that we're going to talk about outside that is the comprehensive legal and institution framework for the post-privatization phase of the power sector. So there are going to be a legal and institutional framework that is going to lead to ensure that we have a stable electrical sector. Then regulatory measures to promote cost-reflective and service-reflective tariffs. 
Now we see that most discos com- continue to complain that we they don't generate a lot of funds, and the consumers too are saying that we don't have adequate power supply, and the bills that give to give to them is quite high. So this bill is trying to ensure that there is going to be a service reflective tariff and cost reflective tariff, service reflective tariff on the consumer and cost reflective tariff on the distribution and generating station. The third one is to stimulate the contribution of renewable energy to Nigeria's energy mix. So, like in the foreign countries, what you see is that when you have a renewable energy supply within your complex, for example, you have solar, you have wind that is generating power for you. By the time you have excesses, you can take it to the grid. And when you take it to the grid, you have bonus on your bill. So whenever you, are, whenever you want to pay your normal utility bills, it's being reduced because you've given to the grid. So in states, we have its own special grid, whereby people can give. In that case, there will be a robust competition within that state. Now, you should know currently, the fourth one, currently, except NEMSA, that has a special act that was used to enact NEMSA. The NEC, the Rural Electricity Agency, and other agencies within the electrical sector has no special act establishing them. They all fall under the Electric uh, electric Power Sector Reform Act 2005 that established NEC, that established Rural Electricity Board. But this bill is saying that there should be an act that is establishing NEC, that is Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, the Rural uh, Electricity Agency, which they have a change to rural electricity and renewable energy agency. And the NEMSA itself, I think it is a reform act for the NEMSA. So this is going to be a great one because when, it, when, when there's an act establishing a body, it tends to give that credibility to that body. <coughs> then fifth, we, we, we NEC already has an existing dispute resolution committee whereby they have various forums within states. But now, this law is trying to set up a, what they call, electricity dispute appeal tribunal, like a tribunal, whereby when there's a dispute between the consumer and the disco or Jenko's or uh, Jenko's disco, or wherever we have dispute within the electricity sector, instead of going to the normal judiciary, there's a tribunal that is being proposed, that whenever there's a conflict, the tribunal will, that is set up, be used to resolve such view. Then the sixth one that a lot of people are feeling that's going to be a bureaucracy, but it's not going to be a bureaucracy. It's actually to ensure that there's a flow of communication between the federal, state, and local government. Is that on, once the bill has been enacted, the Federal Ministry of Power is given a year to prepare and publish in the Federal Gazette an integrated national integrated electricity policy and strategic implementation plan. INIEP SIP to guide the overall development of the electric power sector in the country. So this is very important to ensure that the minister, the minister of power is in control, not only in control, ensures that he coordinates the entire existence of the power sector. The seventh one is that the bill, the bill also empowers the minister of power to declare the medium and long-term electricity market which next shall establish. This will enhance physical discipline among operators, unlike the present transitional electricity market, which in 2005 and still has this schools paying less than 30% of their economy to the federal government. So you can see that if you ask most these schools, apart from Ikeja and Echo, most people don't even, most of other, most, most other discos, even they hardly remit close to 30% of their monthly energy collection due to inefficiencies. So, but with this, it's going to remove all those bottlenecks that is incurred. Then the eighth one is, the B6 to also relinquish the systems operation role and license of the transmission company and focus on transmission service provider license from NEC for efficiency. You see, that way you give someone too much responsibility. NEC was in charge of system operation, they're in charge of transmission service provide, provision, they're in charge of so many responsibilities, but this bill, tends to strip them of those responsibilities and reserve the responsibility of just the transmission service provision to ensure that they are efficient. The ninth one is it gives stricter penalty for energy theft. Energy theft, this has complained seriously that they've been energy theft. 
So they are giving street penalty to anybody that is caught stealing energy. This is going to be in a, a period of three years imprisonment or a fine of bill. Or both going to prison, paying the bill together. So please, by the time this bill is enacted, I have always advised that energy theft is not advised. If you are indulging it, once this bill has turned to a law, I think that whenever you are caught, you'll be imprisoned or you, you have option of paying a fine or you, you'll be penalized with both. Then the final one is the bill also seeks to establish federal power tax force to perform the functions and powers assigned to it relating to the prevention and enforcement of power offenses. Now, this is totally different from the presidential tax force that has been in existence between 2010 and 2015. It's, it's going to be solely the responsibility of this uh, <coughs> tax force to ensure that anybody that is found wanting will be penalized. So NEC will be relieved of a lot of responsibility in going here and there to change. This tax force will not be responsible to carry out this. So this is a robust bill, and I believe this is one of the most important bills that has appealed to my person ever since this House of, House of Assembly came into power. So I believe and I encourage that um, the State House of Assemblies, which would also vote for this um, bill, because as is said by the Senate President, that a bill that has the assent of both the House of Representatives and the Senate must also go through the various States House of Assembly. So we are very optimistic that with the benefits of this bill, I believe that all State House of Assembly will have no option and to approve this bill. And once this is done, I believe that our power sector will have a robust improvement henceforth. I believe this has been able to enlighten you on what this bill has been, as everybody has been talking about. I believe you have gotten the knowledge and what it is. So let us keep hoping that this will see the improvement of our power sector. I believe I've been able to educate you. Please, if you have been educated, kindly click on the subscription button and to get notified whenever we post subsequent video. Thank you very much.